like looking up at my nieces in the balcony while I'm cooking, and I can just see it in their eyes that they're so proud of me. I'm making an oxtail stew. This is something that we all love to eat, so uh, I hope I do the dish proud. Oxtail is seen all over Southeast Asia, and always as a super stew, and with rice. Now, how he's going to elevate it, I don't know. Really excited because we've been promised two elevated Filipino dish. You got this, Matthew. Let's represent, buddy. The moment of truth coming up for Jeremy. He's about to open up his pressure cooker and find out if his oxtail is cooked. It's soft. Jeremy just took a jar of peanut butter and dumped it into his oxtail. Peanut butter is used <laughs> all over the world for sweet and savory. Feeling really good right now. It's just all a matter of getting it on the plate. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up! I'm taking a risk with this dish, but I want to share my culture with Canada. It's an elevated take on a traditional dish called kare kare, oxtail stewed with peanut butter. Typically, it's served with a bowl of rice. I can see why this makes a great family dish. Yeah, I'm pretty proud. Oxtail in 60 minutes, that's tough. I knew, but I wanted to go for it and take the risk. Peanut butter, shrimp paste, yep. and the rice cake, that's a nice touch because the Chinese say, if we don't eat rice, it's not a meal. Same with Filipino culture, we eat rice with everything. It's delicious. Thank you. I taste all the different textures, the smokiness, the different flavors. Everything seems to come together. You know, at first I saw the peanut butter, you know, it would have been a bit bland, but you know, with the saltiness from the fish sauce, it's just right, the seasoning. I think it just needs a little bit more kick. Okay. And a bit of a spice. Perfect family meal. Thank you. I wish my mom was still alive to see this. She would be so proud, but I have her with me on my arm all the time. There's a time to win a mystery box. It's right now in front of my daughters. I'm gonna do a classic miso marinated cod. And then I'm doing apple and papaya salad with a crunchy peanut butter and a vinaigrette. My family did well. They got my back. They knew exactly what I could cook. <laughs> this is a tough mystery box challenge because we upped the ante by asking them to do two dishes, one savory, one sweet. So I'm starting with dessert, peanut butter and chocolate truffle. This is looking good already. I think the families are going to be absolutely blown away by the level of creativity. You're awesome. I'm going to make a fireless chocolate cake, and I'm making steamed chicken buns. My dad really likes steamed buns, so it's one of his favorite foods, so that's my inspiration. The dish I would do with chicken is a, a dish that I often do at home. Cold noodle dish, shredded chicken, and peanut butter sauce. I'm going to make some peanut butter whoopie pies. It's a cake top and a cake bottom, and whipped peanut butter and whipped cream. David, how are you? Good, Jeff. You were completely overwhelmed with emotion when your family came in. It is absolutely incredible to have them here with me today. And you have cod. Yes. A little bit of miso. I'm going to pan roast it. Should be tasty. He's sweating a lot, isn't he? I told you he sweats a lot when he cooks. <laughs> so what is your dessert? It's going to be a chocolate and peanut butter tart with some whipped cream on top. The boys love their whipped cream. Sounds fantastic. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. Come on, now. There we go. You like this, buddy? Does this look good? It looks great. Sabrina is taking her fish now out of the parchment. He's plating his last few truffles. Sabrina is deboning her fish. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, five, and five. The first home cook that we're calling up used their fish that their family gave them in a fresh and inventive way. And they paired it with a dessert that looks absolutely mouthwatering. That home cook was David. Please bring up your dish. Dessert is a chocolate and peanut butter tart, then vanilla bean whipped cream. What dish would your kids eat first here? Oh, without a doubt, it'd be dessert. Dessert? Absolutely. It's amazing. 
flavors are all incredible. The chocolate really complements the peanut butter. Just a little pinch of sea salt would help bring everything up. But other than that, great job. Please go to the front. The next dish we'd like to taste is a beautiful feast for the eyes. Cody, please bring your dish up. The sweet dish is a peanut butter chocolate truffle. A ganache should be rich, decadent, smooth. Is that what it's going to be when I taste it? I certainly hope so, chef. Cody, big, rich chocolate hits you right up front, and then the peanut butter sort of creeps in behind. And then to finish it off, that touch of sea salt. Delicious. Well done. Thank you. Oh, perfect. The third and final dish was made by a home cook who put a twist on a familiar protein, and they paired it with a dessert that evokes the best of our childhood memories. Please step forward. Lynn. Chocolate chunk, peanut butter cookies, and vanilla milkshake. This is one of the best presentation I've seen from you so far. It's not overly fancy, it's natural. You got the Asian hair and then cookies and milk, but elevated. Well, I can see some of that lovely Kraft Crunchy peanut butter. You hit that right on. <laughs> Definitely a soft, moist cookie. Wow, that is cookie and milk in dreamland. Crunchy peanut butter and chocolate. They're not overpowering each other. And then the milkshake, it complements this perfectly. Thank you, Chef. Well done. This is the first mystery box challenge. The swing ingredient is the Kraft peanut butter. That can go either way, sweet or savory. I would probably pick a dessert. I would tend to agree. I'm not a sweet guy. So the pork loin, the peanut butter, the chili, that's speaking satay to me. I'm actually going to make a kind of Southwestern-inspired pork tenderloin. I've actually got it smoking here in this bag. I want to infuse it with some nice smoky flavor. Boom! It smells delicious. I think the judge is going to like it. I'm going to make a marinated pork tenderloin with a noodle stir fry. I'm going to make a peanut vinaigrette, a little bit of sweet, and I added a little bit of meat, some spice. I'm going Asian today. I'm making a warm noodle stir fry. I'm gonna do a really adventurous sauce with the peanut butter and the vanilla. Mmm, tasty. You're at the halfway mark. You have 30 minutes left. I'm gonna attempt a peanut saute soup without the main spices. Kayla, what are you making? Hi there. I am making a peanut butter and chocolate creme brulee. Have you made this before? I have made creme brulee, but I've never put these flavors together. Really? Well, one thing you got to really be careful, you have chocolate and you have peanut butter. You got to make sure that you can taste both. Yeah, absolutely. OK, I appreciate that. Thank you. Charlie, can you tell me quickly what you're making? A peanut soup. Uh, what's the spice are you going to be using? The garlic and ginger. You know, those gingers are kind of in fairly big pieces. You know, to get the flavors out very quickly, I would cut them smaller. Right on. Thank you. What are you making here, Eric? Oh, I'm making a fruit tart, and I'm going to fill it with bananas and top it with some brulee strawberries. Are you using crunchy or smooth peanut butter? I'm using crunchy for the filling, and then I mix some smooth with the chocolate. Why did you decide to go sweet instead of savory? I thought it was more outside the box. Figured everybody would do pork tenderloin. A little bit risky? Yeah, I'm all about taking risks. I feel crazy. I feel low. I just pulled it off. Oh, my goodness. The plate looks beautiful. I'm so proud of this dish. I really am. I call it a spicy peanut soup with pork and crispy peanuts. Mm. Wow. Fantastic. I love the consistency. And I really admire how you took a classic ingredient, such as peanut butter, and elevated it. I love that texture. Pork, soft, tender, the soup, velvety, the noodles, just right. Awesome. Thank you.
whose flavors are bright and punchy and full of zest. It's a very nice dish. The second person who made it into our top three chose to do a sweet dish. This was definitely the best looking we saw today. And the person who made this dessert is... Eric. My strategy is showing the judges my potential, my versatility, and my ambition. It's a banana peanut butter tart topped with strawberries and a chocolate peanut butter sauce. The taste blends very nicely together. It's just a touch dry. I would serve this with some ice cream or a sauce. Very nice. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. It's very well balanced. Nice, lightly golden brown crust and even thickness all the way around. The peanut butter, the chocolate, the strawberries cut the richness. Sometimes it's just hard to find something wrong with such a great dish. Thank you so much. I don't think the other home cooks know I can cook. Now the cat's out of the bag. They know I'm a top contender. I'm a threat to be reckoned with. Our third pick showed a surprising level of sophistication for a home cook. A few of you made similar things, but this really stood out. I want to be the first one to win the first Mystery Box Challenge on the first ever MasterChef Canada. And the dish we're talking about belonged to... They just need to call out Josh. Marita. What's this called? Noodle stir fry with a sweet and spicy vinaigrette and a cilantro salad on top. You certainly nailed it with the hot and sweet. I thought the seasoning was perfect. What I really admire about this dish is the scotch bonnet. Have you worked with that ingredient before? Yes, I use it all the time. I don't think anyone else even used that pepper. You know, those flavors are strong, bold. That heat just pushes you right to the edge. But then that sweetness brings you right back. It's that fine balance that you managed to achieve. I'm not the uh, strong cake guy, but I'm gonna make a chocolate cake with peanut butter. My son's JJ's favorite two ingredients. Perfect. David, you're sweating. I sweat. I put this pressure on myself. My son's birthday today. Wow, so there's two of you with, uh, with birthdays today. It's amazing. Excellent, so you're making a peanut butter cake? Peanut butter and chocolate. Standard vanilla icing. Cover the whole thing with pretzels. My favorite part is dipping in the uh, batter. Yeah, it's the best part of the cake, isn't it? That tastes good already. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you, chef. Ten minutes! We are low on time. I'm putting so much pressure on myself. My internal temperature is just roaring. I'm trying to concentrate. Oh, my god. I'm putting so much pressure on myself. I've burnt the peanuts. I have to push forward. I'm not failing on this challenge for JJ. You know, David's cake looks absolutely amazing. He handles that spatula like a pro. Well, it's very similar to concrete. It is like troweling. My secret weapon is the fact that I am a talented concrete guy. The chocolate birthday cake, Philadelphia cream cheese peanut butter uh, layers, and then I covered the whole thing with pretzels and the roasted peanuts. It's my little boy's birthday today, so I put everything into it. It's really hard to get a cake that perfect. Rigid, smooth construction. You got the peanut butter, you got the cream cheese, all these comfort things that your son loves. This cake is about love. Thank you.
beautifully cooked sponge. Enough sweetness, a little saltiness from the peanut and pretzels. In fact, that flavor is, is quite sophisticated and you can't go wrong with peanut butter. Top marks all around for a stunning cake. But when it comes to spelling? Yeah, I'm not known for my spelling. I think that says hap. It made us all very hap. <laughs>